Welcome back. So, let's talk about the second book in the Nancy Drew series, and once again, I don't have the book, I have the next one. <laughs> so, in the next edition of this, we'll be talking about the bungalow mystery. Um, the second one, the one we're actually talking about today, is the secret staircase, I believe that's what it was called. And, um, in that one, the basic premise is that her father is off um, trying to deal with some railroad company thing that's trying to, like, they bought out, like, some farmhouses and they're putting in a railroad. Because, again, it's the 30s. <laughs> and, like, nowadays, I'm like, that'd be a freeway. Or, like, an apartment complex. Let's just be real. Um, we're not going to have a railroad. <laughs> Like, I don't even think we have a railroad that, like, passengers come through that goes anywhere outside of, like, our valley. Um, we just have our light rail trains for public transportation. But anyways, um, except, like, the freight ones. But whatever. So, her dad's dealing with that case, and her friend Helen, who, P.S., is going to continue on in the series, apparently, I started this one earlier today. Um, they end up going to some person's house. I think they're related. I don't think it's to Nancy Drew. I think it's to Helen or something. And yeah, they go over there because apparently there's a ghost that's also not a ghost that's actually a thief, but they keep calling it a ghost. So, you know, great on the continuously calling things ghosts that aren't ghosts, but yeah. So, the mystery is Nancy trying to figure out, is it a thief? Is it a ghost? What is it? And also trying to deal with the case her father is working on. So, overall, I mean, these are pretty easy to guess the endings, books, but I won't... If you don't want to be spoiled, don't continue watching. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, Nancy ends up going and going to this house and, I don't know, just... The way people just like actively just let strangers into their places and the amount of times Nancy gets into strangers houses and it's just like this is fine I'm just like dude this is the Sun is happening now so hurry for that um, but just that stranger danger 101 <laughs> so there's that um, this ending it felt a little more rushed than the last book um, because in the last one, it was really more like, oh, well, this is happening and then this is happening. And it made sense that it concluded really quickly because once you have the paper that you need, you're good. But in this one, like, it just was very quick. Just like building up to the moment we find the stupid staircase that we've been waiting for this whole time. Which I'm still not sure architecturally how that would work. <laughs> to be like, these two houses on very big plots of land have a little... Uh, trail between them underground that's hidden sure and it leads into the attic or something if I remember right um, it was just kind of weird and I don't know just kind of always convenient that it's like her father was locked up in that area um, but something that I did notice that was kind of like okay was the um, the old people are just always like, oh, I'm fine. Um, and like, she has a heart attack and is like, I'm not gonna go to the hospital. I need to watch my house. And it's like, what? No, you had a heart attack. Get your ass to a doctor. But then they also have a home doctor, which is like, that. that's not really a thing for a heart attack. <laughs> like, you're gonna, you're gonna be sitting in the hospital for that one, just a little bit. Um, I also really liked that we had a telegraph or telegram or whatever telegram from her father like it's the 30s I don't know when those went out of business but I feel like we don't have telegrams anymore I feel like that's or tele I think it's telegram like whatever it's fine old school texting basically really old school but yeah it just it oh my god it's so much fun you're just like just the little things that you're just like, wow, that's not modern at all. Cool. Um, and 
I don't know, they're like, the 1700s was so far away. And now I get to sit here like almost 100 years later like, yeah, no. That is a very long time ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, this book was just kind of, again, it's a fun read. And I do quite love the series. Like, they're super cheesy. But I love the writing style. I like that she doesn't go into a bunch of unnecessary details. Like, I've noticed this that a lot of the more modern books, at least that I've read, and a lot of the things that I studied when I was getting my degree in writing, is that there's such a freaking focus on the details and like explaining the color of the water. And there's not a lot in this at all. There's not a lot of descriptors. Um, and most of the descriptors are like, he's a tall, dark, athletic man. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Um, that's the end of the story. Or if they do have some descriptors, it's rare and it's like part of like finding the character. Um, like the, oh God, his name was weird, like Willie Wilterson or something stupid like that. Um, but <laughs> like, it was like, oh, it's the old man with the long hair and like the blue crazy eyes or whatever. Um, just those kinds of things, you know? So it's kind of nice to have um, not a lot of details where it's like, oh, the parlor was the color of la la la. And um, the other parts where it, you know, like modern books nowadays just have, I feel like a lot more detail. And maybe it's because it's a children's book <laughs> um, and not adult. But yeah, it just doesn't have a lot of wasted space with details. It's like, oh, the plaster and the the ceiling fell. That's it. That's the end of that story. We're not talking about how the debris is everywhere and it's covering the couch and the the it, it, like. You could just blather on versus the ceiling fell. We're stuck under it. Great. Also, the amount of times that they don't go to the hospital when they get injured, though. <laughs> like, if a ceiling fell on me. I'd probably like go to a, a doctor if I like like I got knocked out. That's like a head injury. That's like a concussion probably gonna happen. Maybe see a doctor. I mean, granted, it was 90 years ago, so maybe the doctors wouldn't be able to do much. Uh, medicine's come a long way in 100 years. But yeah, that just it always throws me. I'm like, okay, Nancy. But I don't know. I really liked it. As always, these are such fun books to read. Um, again, if you are watching this because you don't care if you're spoiled, whatever, still read it because they're fun. <laughs> so anyways, um, I'll probably be talking about the next one in a few days. Eventually I will have other witchy videos to talk about, but I'm just kind of, I'm not really doing a lot witchy right now because I don't have any space to do witchy anything. My rooms are under construction, so it's all just kind of stacked and I'm not really doing much with it until everything's put away. So I'm just reading, also because we have no power today. Like, I have to sit in my car uh, to charge my phone because no power. So, anyways, thank you for watching this video, and let me know your thoughts on the second book from the Nancy Drew series. I'd love to hear what parts were fun and exciting for you, because again, it's so much fun reading these books because they're still modern enough that like the language isn't like, oh God, like you have to really think about the words that you're reading because language changes over time. It's still relatively modernly used kind of. It hasn't changed that much, I should say. However, some of the things that they do, you're just like, we wouldn't do this modern times. I don't even know if they would have done it back then, but there's not a lot of people to be like, hey, as a coherent adult in the 30s, would you do this? It's not gonna be a thing, because these people would be like 130 years old now. Isn't that weird to think about? Like, the people that were, like, living these lives at that time are, like, all dead. Such a morbid thought. Kind of cool, though. Like, a little glimpse into the past. Not too far away past, but, I mean, getting there. The people that are born in that decade are, you know, hitting their 90s late 80s, 90s, so they're getting up there. But anyways, 
Um, yeah, so let me know your thoughts on the Nancy Drew books. And until my next video, thank you for watching and bless be.